Hello everybody, welcome to Psychology 301, Intro to Research Methods in Psychology. Um, my name is Dr. Spilken, and today I want to just introduce myself and go over the syllabus for this class so you have an idea of what the expectations are, and then of course if you have any questions, feel free to email me. So uh, my name is Dr. Spilken, I am a pediatric neuropsychologist, so I have my PhD in clinical psychology, with a specialization in pediatric neuropsychology. I've done research for many years um, at UCSD, looking at um, different neurological conditions in children and the effects um, that that has on uh, children's cognition and behaviors, et cetera. Um, so I have done research. I actually love research. Um, research and statistics are like my favorite things, which is, I know, surprising to many people. Um, so if you wonder, are there people who really like research? That's me. So I'm hoping as we go through this class, I can get you to, if not really like research, um, maybe kind of like research, um, and hopefully understand that it um, can be interesting to be a part of. So best way to reach me is by my email address here. Um, all my office hours will be over Zoom, so you're welcome to send me questions by email and I will answer them, or set, send me um, an email asking to set up Zoom office hours, and I can do that as well. We will be using Blackboard for this course this semester, so be sure you have access to Blackboard. And then you are signed up for a particular lab, so be sure you know if you are in sections 9 or 10, that's Xavier's lab, or section 11 or 12, that's uh, Devon's lab, and you must be um, associated with a particular lab in this class. And so you will have a particular TA, that TA will help you as we're working on our um, lab reports. Uh, they'll be grading your written assignments, and so be sure you know uh, which lab you're in. All right, so I have this quote here, research is formalized curiosity, it's poking and prying with a purpose. And I like that because it really tells you a lot about what research is, which is asking questions, trying to figure out answers. I think sometimes people feel that research is really boring, but to me, it's the opposite of boring. It's like you have question, you wanna find the answer, you try to design something in a creative way to find your answer, and then you come up with another question. And so it's actually a pretty creative um, and, and fun process. So course overview, you'll be learning about implementing various methodologies used in psychology. Lectures will cover, cover various experimental techniques, methodological concepts, statistical procedures. Um, our labs will be heavily interactive and will include designing, conducting your own research and reporting this in APA, which is American Psychological Association style. In terms of learning outcomes, um, and you have this um, syllabus posted for you, so you can certainly go ahead and read through this in more depth, but you will be learning how to use the scientific method to answer questions about human behavior. We'll talk a lot about measurement issues. How do you measure things in psychology? It's kind of difficult when you think about we measure things like um, depression and anxiety and self-esteem. So we'll talk about how we can measure and observe these concepts, how to write good survey questions, and how to develop measures that are reliable and valid. Um, design issues we'll learn about in terms of how to state hypotheses that can be tested, how to design or plan modest studies, um, how to develop good strategies for sampling participants and assigning participants to treatments, um, and then you'll be learning how to make sense of data that you have collected or read in the news. And that's really important to me. Um, you'll learn how to interpret results um, in terms of statistical output from SPSS. So um, we kind of go a little bit beyond what you learned in statistics, and we'll be really focusing on what these results mean, which I think is often more interesting than all the details about the computations of how to compute different statistical tests. Um, and we'll learn about evaluation of designs, including how you, what are the appropriate types of conclusions to make. 
And then we'll spend quite a bit of time learning how to write scientific reports that will be accurate in terms of following very specific directions, um, describing procedures and results in perfect detail, um, submitting very accurate reports. You'll be learning APA style, American Psychological Association style, um, learning to follow, follow specific rules for scientific writing, and how to be very clear and effective in your writing. This part, um, which is extremely important as you move on in your um, psychology degree, um, but a, and if you go on to graduate school, uh, scientific writing is extremely important, and so learning how to write in this way will be very important. However, even if you decide to not pursue psychology, um, never take another psychology class again, just learning how to write in a very effective, clear way will be important no matter what your future career, career goal is. Um, all right, I'm going to let you read this learning goals and student um, learning outcomes on your own. In terms of required materials, this is an immediate access course, so um, all of your required textbooks are provided for you in digital format by the first day of classes and are free through the add drop date. So you have um, from the first day of class till the add drop date to use the materials without any cost at all to you. And then your SDSU student account will be charged a reduced price for the use of the materials for the remainder of the semester unless you opt out of the content um, by 8 o'clock on the add drop date, which is September 4th. If you have any questions, visit this website to learn more about immediate access, um, pricing, etc. Um, what's included is Writing with Style, which is a book that we'll be using for learning how to write, Research Methods in Psychology, 3rd Edition, with the Inquisitive, the online homework, program by Morling and SPSS for research methods. And the price for all of this together will be $79, which is must let, if you get it through immediate access, which is much less expensive than it would be if you were buying this all separately. Um, let's see, if you choose not to use the immediate access option, then you would need to buy uh, the text along with um, Inquisitive. Um, from the publisher, you can buy it there. Again, it's going to be less expensive through immediate access. The writing guide of writing with style. We have a lab manual that will be posted on Blackboard as a PDF file, so that's not, nothing you have to buy. And then we have lab PowerPoints and slide presentations. That's all provided for you on Blackboard. Uh, you will need access to a working computer for the entirety of the class. Uh, believe me, I understand that sometimes computers break um, and you may need a day or two to get it fixed or find some kind of replacement, but you won't be excused from assignments for a prolonged period of time because you don't have a computer. So you can't say, well, my computer broke and I won't have it for six weeks. Um, so especially now that we're taking these online classes, you may want to think about um, what is your backup option if your computer breaks. Do you have a computer you can borrow or what would be your plan. The course format, this is a fully online course consisting of non-synchronous posted lectures, PowerPoint slides, lab PowerPoints, inquisitive assignments, activities, lab reports, everything is online. Links will be um, available through Blackboard. You can see the class calendar for posting dates um, and use Chrome, Safari, Mozilla, uh, browsers, if possible, Internet Explorer is notoriously problematic with some of the software. Virtual participation. Um, research methods is a learning by doing class. So even though the class is virtual, your participation is very important. And participation will mean listening to the online lectures each week, completing the online activities, attending Zoom, lab and office hours if you have questions. I do ask for respect just as if this was an in-person class that you so show respect to me and the other students in our online class um, in all of your online submissions or any kind of online um, meetings and things like that. 
grade challenges upon receiving graded assignments, you have one week to check your grade with me um, or your TA. And so this is really good, um, just a good habit to get into is kind of not letting things fall behind. So certainly in this class, particularly because we do some writing, maybe you don't agree with a grade that you received. So then send an email to your TA right away so that you can talk about that um, and get it straightened out. And of course, if there's a mistake, the grade will be changed or the TA will explain to you why you got the grade you received. Um, but don't wait till the end of the semester because it's very difficult or impossible for uh, professors to have all of, you know, to the students come at the end of the semester and say, oh my goodness, I really don't like my grades on any of these 10 papers. Can you please look at them all? So really try to keep track um, and keep up to date. There'll be a number of different activities that are graded in this class um, for your grades that are detailed below. So we have three multi-format exams, so multiple choice, matching, short answer, um, not really essay, more like short answer. The first two are 100 points each, and the third is cumulative and worth 150 points. The exams will include material from the book, the lab manual, the writing guide, lectures, and we have, I guess you wouldn't call them in-class activities anymore, but they'd be Blackboard activities. Um, each exam, you have 75 minutes for the first two and 120 minutes for the final exam. The exams will be administered through Blackboard, and I'll give you instructions on how to complete the online exams as we get closer to that. If you have official accommodations from SDSU for extra time on exams, please email me the paperwork so I can ensure you receive that extra time. No late exams without documentation, like a doctor's note. If you know that you're going to miss an exam, please make arrangements with me at least a week prior. Um, really, I'm, I give you the entire day to take an exam. So whatever the date is of the exam, you can schedule it for yourself on that day, anytime. So I feel like that's pretty flexible and you should be able to find the 75 minutes to take the test. So um, really, it would have to be a documented emergency that would allow you to have a makeup test. Um, and that I would schedule on a case by case basis. Otherwise, um, you'll certainly miss, uh, have a percent taken off your exam um, if you don't take it on the day of the exam, um, on the day of the exam, and you'd have to explain to me why that was. So really, you should be taking the test on the exam date. Um, Blackboard activities, you will have um, activities posted for you to complete on Blackboard. They're meant to re reinforce concepts and help prepare you for the exams. Um, they'll be worth a total of 25 points towards your total grade. There are no exceptions or extensions for our Sunday at 11.59 due dates. I would say finish your assignments early since the computer will close them. Anything turned late on Blackboard will have a maximum point value of half credit, whether they're an hour late or a week late. And, you know, half credit is 50%, so that's not great. Um, anything you're going to turn in late must be turned in by the last day of class to receive any points at all. Now, inquisitive, you'll have inquisitive chapters. Those are also due Sundays at 11.59 p.m. Inquisitive is an adaptive online self-study quiz and study tool that's associated with our textbook. They allow you to practice smaller sections, um, like one ch basically one chapter of the text, at your own pace and at your own time. They're meant to reinforce concepts and help prepare you for the exams. There are nine chapters that you'll have inquisitives for. They're worth five points each. Um, I'll drop one for a total of 40 points. Is that correct? Um, inquisitive activities, you want to complete them before the due date. They will really help you learn the textbook book material, um, and you can keep working on them until you earn 100%. Basically, you're working towards getting a certain number of points, and as you answer questions correctly, you earn points. If you answer a question incorrectly, um, you may lose points or at least not gain points, and once you hit that um, specified number of points, you receive 
So really this is for your learning um, and it doesn't matter how many questions it takes you to get to that specified number of points. Once you get there, it's full credit, it's 100%. So I would definitely suggest doing those because you can get basically 40 out of 40 points on those just by completing them. However, they cannot be completed after the due date. So again, be working on these during the week um, and be sure they're finished by Sunday at 11.59. There are links in Blackboard in order to um, get to Inquisitive. So I have weekly modules in Blackboard and at the end of each weekly module, there's a little link for your Inquisitives. And that's the way I need you to get to the Inquisitive. Once you do that, then our two, your Blackboard and your Inquisitive grades are kind of synced or linked together. And when you complete your Inquisitive, your grade gets automatically imported into Blackboard. So be sure that you are um, accessing Inquisitive through Blackboard. Um, if you don't see your scores in the Blackboard grades, or you're prompted to enter a student set ID, something is uh, not set up correctly. And so you're gonna want to um, try to sync your sign in, log in to sync your um, inquisitives. And if you have any questions, then go to the support um, help desk. You can do a live chat, you can do a phone call, um, but this would be the way to get some help. Now, that is all kind of our lecture portion of the class. Our lab portion of the class is learning how to write. APA style papers, and you're going to be writing two papers. The first paper, and this is labs one through six, will focus on the topic of pedestrian behavior. Um, APA paper number one lab manual will be is available now on Blackboard. The point about values can be found in the grading rubric below. Your TAs will be talking with you about um, what you'll be doing for the APA paper. Um, and then the second paper is another APA paper. This is lab seven through 14, focused on the topic of self-esteem. And that lab manual will also be on Blackboard and the point values will be here as well. So you'll be doing two papers and basically a research paper is divided into sections. There's an introduction, a method section, a results, a, con a discussion, and each week you'll be working on one section. So it's not like we say, hey, you have four weeks to write out the entire paper. Each week, um, there'll be a lab uh, PowerPoint posted, which will teach you how to write a particular section of um, the paper. And then you'll write that section of the paper and you'll get feedback on that section of the paper. The next week, you'll learn the next section, like writing a method section. The third week, you'll be writing a result section. So we go through it bit by bit by bit, so it shouldn't, shouldn't be overwhelming, and you're learning each section one week at a time. Um, and here's our grade composition. We've got our two midterms, they're 100 points each. The final is 150 points. The first APA style paper is 101 points, and you can look in the lab manual for how this grade is broken down. The second paper is 89 points. Your inquisitive uh, modules, those are 40 points, and the ac Blackboard activities are 25 points. Gives us 605 points for the whole class. It's a lot of points, and then it's your grade is broken down um, like this. University policies, again, I will let you read this on your own, um, but basically if, a few things. If you need any accommodations, please um, contact the Student Ability Success Center as soon as possible. And if you have any kind of um, academic accommodations, please let me know immediately so that I can uh, be sure you get the accommodations you need. Concerns, problems, complaints, please come to me. We will do, I will do my best to um, figure out whatever the, the problem is and how we can solve it. And if um, that doesn't work, which in all my years of teaching, We've always been able to solve a problem, um, gives you the other names of uh, people to contact and in the, um, in the order to contact them. Academic honesty is extremely important in this class um, and I take it very seriously. No plagiarism, particularly because we're doing writing in this class, um, no, no cheating, no working on assignments together. Um, 
if you have any questions about that, let me know. But if you um, end up participating in any kind of academic dishonesty, you'll receive a zero on the assignment and you may fail the class. It is really not worth it. So just do your own work. If you have questions, ask your TA or myself. We're here to help you. We really want you to learn this. And this is a really important class um, as you move on through your um, degree in psychology. So really take the time. This is a class that will take some time, but take the time to learn the material. Let's see. Um, there's our online classroom conduct standards. You can take a look at that. Uh, if you are going to be absent, if you're sick, if something happens, please let me know. That's really a key is being able to communicate with each other um, and we will work that out. Here's our lab, I mean our lecture schedule. I do say here subject to change. Any changes will be announced um, on our online Blackboard class and an email. We're all learning that things can change at any minute. So anything that changes, I will make an announcement. Tentative le lecture schedule. Now you have a lab syllabus posted for you as well. And the lab syllabus will have the lab schedule. So you kind of have two syllabi for this class, the lecture, which is this one, and then the lab, which is your other one. And the lab will be um, explained to you by your TA. And so each week we basically do a chapter. The first week is our welcome. We're doing now an introduction to the class. This is when I want you to work out any technical issues. So be sure you can access your ebook, your inquisitive, your writing with style. And if there's any problems, let's work it out this week. And then you're going to work on chapter one, psychology as a way of thinking. The second week is chapter two. Uh, the third week is chapter three. This is all in your Morling textbook, the research methods textbook. Um, chapter three, we're going to cover in two weeks. So you have two weeks to do that. And then your first exam is Friday, 9.25, between 8 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. And it's on chapters one through three. Then we do chapter five, six, seven, and eight. And you take your next exam on Friday the 30th of October between 8 and 11.59 p.m. And then we've got chapters 10, 11, 4 gets in here, um, 12 and 13. And your final exam here is um, 4, 11, 12, and 13 and a little bit of cumulative information. That will be posted on a study guide. It's not everything that's cumulative, um, but some of the information is cumulative. And so I will write that and uh, cumulative. I'll type that in and be sure that's posted for you. And that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Looking forward to having you all in class.